Hey, I want to take a little time today to discuss conspiracy theorists. Now, I think most people know how I feel about conspiracy theorists and conspiracies, or at least most conspiracy theorists and most conspiracy theories. I just believe in today's age, it's really hard to pull off a major conspiracy. There's just too much information and all it takes nowadays is one person willing to talk and then everyone else is able to see it and everyone else is able to start looking into things. So conspiracy theories are almost impossible to maintain these days if they're public and they're large. Now, I'm not saying conspiracy theories don't uh, exist because I believe people in the government conspire all the time to do things. Look at NRA conspiring with politicians to sell our rights. Conspiracy theories uh, do exist. They're just not these grand public conspiracies that people say like, you know, oh, the Democrats are running a, you know, a sex child ring out of the basement of a pizzeria or uh, the left is staging these anti-gun fake shootings, you know, stuff like that just doesn't uh, work. There's too many people can be like, oh, I was standing right there that day. I didn't see it. And there'd be a thousand people that would back them up immediately on social media. Uh, so when you see like one person say, oh, I was there, it didn't happen, and no one backs them up, that probably means that one person is just lying. Uh, conspiracy theories are really hard to maintain. And uh, conspiracy theorists, uh, I don't care for most of the big ones, of course. Uh, everyone knows how I feel about Alex Jones. Uh, I think he is the worst type of conspiracy theorist because he's a fraud. He doesn't believe the things he says. It's one thing if someone actually believes something and says it, whether they're right or they're wrong, that's their First Amendment right. Uh, just like it's his First Amendment right to make stuff up, I guess. But people who make stuff up, like Alex Jones, he doesn't believe the things he tells you. He thinks up what is the most uh, motivating and uh, what will make people the angriest. You know, what can I make up that's just the most outlandish that will just draw in the most of a certain type of vulnerable person that I can then profit off of. So he makes up these stories, him and his group, uh, that they don't believe themselves. They just know that there's certain people out there that will believe it that are also vulnerable to other things like selling them uh, worthless products at 20 times their market value. You know, he'll say, oh, the government's putting stuff in the water to make us, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then he'll say, oh, but here's a water filter you can buy at five times what it would cost to buy a water filter anywhere else that will keep you from being affected by this. You know, or, oh, the government's doing things that uh, harms masculinity to make you less masculine and uh, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, oh, but here's a little bottle of snake oil you can buy for a hundred times its value that'll make you still be masculine. Yeah, uh, It's just garbage. He's the worst type of conspiracy theorist. So you might think that I just don't think conspiracy theorists should be around, uh, but that is false. I strongly believe in people being able to be a conspiracy theorist and being able to spout conspiracy theories. Uh, now, sometimes I wish certain people wouldn't, especially people in the gun community that yell things like, false flag, every time something bad happens and makes us all look like a bunch of nut jobs because the kind of things they say are fake really couldn't work out as a conspiracy theory because it's too public. Uh, but I still want people to be able to speak up when they think something is actually happening. Uh, you know, it's like the canary in the coal mine. Uh, most conspiracy theorists, when they babble and they yell, you can easily dispel what they say. But occasionally they'll say something that you, when you look into it, it's like, wait, they might be onto something, even if they don't even realize it. Like I said, they're kind of like the canary in the coal mine. So I believe in people being able to spout conspiracy theories and say whatever they truly believe. Now, like I said, I don't like the ones that make up shit to just make money. Those kind of people I think should be run off the internet or run off of whatever, not by the government or by laws, but by the people who are sick of them and just don't want them there. And don't buy their products and don't, you know, who <laughs> promote them or don't let them on their platforms and don't repeat their nonsense. They count on you repeating their nonsense. But, uh, cause that's the main goal right there. I say, listen to conspiracy theorists but never repeat anything they say until you have verified it. If I see someone say something I think is crazy, I'll verify it. I'll verify that either I'm right and they're crazy or maybe what they said is true. Uh, and you should never repeat anything they say until you've done that. And just reading the same story in 10 different sources isn't verifying. Just because you can find this person said this, and then eight other people repeated what they said. That's not verifying the story. Verify the story. Be uh, intellectually curious enough to actually know if what you're spreading is true. Uh, then I think we won't even have a problem with conspiracy theories. We'll listen to them. We'll disregard the ones we don't think hold up, and maybe some every now and then, one out of a thousand will lead to something uh, important. So I'm 
firm believer that's their First Amendment right to say what they want. I even say it's their First Amendment right to scam people as long as they're doing it legally, like, you know, just fooling you into thinking you need something. That's your fault. You should be a smart consumer. Uh, and the same thing with the theory itself. Be a smart consumer. Verify it. And like I said, rep repetition is not verification. It's kind of like, you know, you'll see one case of a handgun, a specific brand of handgun exploding on the internet. It might even have been because the person hand-loaded a super powerful round and blew up their own gun. But then you'll see re it repeated a thousand times. And then a lot of people start thinking, wow, that gun has blown up a thousand times in people's hands. I would never buy that gun no, there was no problem with that gun. One idiot did something, and then a thousand people repeated it like it was gospel or like it happened to them, and then people started believing it. It's a case of a lie becoming a truth because perception is reality, and a lot of people perceive that lie as truth. But no matter how many people actually perceive a lie as truth, it's not really truth. So when you're evaluating these conspiracy theories, like I said, just validate them. Like the one with, oh, the Democrats are, well, no, I think it was Hillary Clinton and some other Democrats are running a child sex ring out of this specific pizzeria in California, in uh, New York City. Well, well, then people went there to, to, you know, check it out. They're like, this building doesn't have a basement. The whole theory was they're running a child sex uh, brothel in the basement of this pizzeria. That pizzeria doesn't have a basement. So that should tell you right there, that theory is garbage, that someone just sat down with no knowledge and made shit up. Uh, but a lot of people will disregard reality like, oh, there's no basement there, but there's probably a hidden basement where it's somewhere else and they just say it's a basement. No, they'll just disregard reality to, to back up their own belief. Don't do that. Uh, in my mind, being intelligent means you're willing to change your mind. Now, believe me, I get slammed a lot on my YouTube videos about changing my mind about certain products. So I know a lot of people don't value changing your mind. But uh, if you want to be intelligent, if you want to be the smartest man in the room, you can't just hold fast to your beliefs. You've got to try to make sure your beliefs are the correct ones. And you've got to research the hell out of things. I research the hell out of things before I make a video. People are like, well, where do you get all these numbers and how come you know so much? I don't know so much. I just sat down for probably a day and a half before I made a video and, and educated myself on a topic. And a lot of times, the end result, my video, is different than what I started out to make the video because during the education process, I changed my mind. And that's what you have to do with conspiracy theories. Don't repeat them willy-nilly because they can be harmful and they make a lot of us look bad. Research them. I'm not saying get rid of them, because like I said, everyone has a right to speak and be heard, no matter how crazy they are or how dishonest they are. They have a right to speak and be heard, and the government shouldn't interfere in that. The internet shouldn't censor that. We, as the consumers of that information, should be the ones that censor that by not spreading stuff that isn't true and by looking further into things that might have a hint of truth to them. So in the end, it's all about two things. It's about the First Amendment and people being able to spout conspiracy theories if they want to without censorship, without censorship from government or media, etc. But it's also about being a smart consumer. We're the ones that decide how big or how small these theories get because we research them, we see how much sense they make, and if they don't make sense, we don't spread them because we don't want to seem like idiots. But if we find one that does make sense, well, then we look into it a little further and maybe we'll actually uncover something important.